tractors and garden equipment. Please see the bulletin for some upcoming events related to our anniversary celebration and also next Sunday's Rally Day event. Today we pray for Jackie Lynn, Karen Blitch, Jud Haig, Mitch Burkhart, Kyle Kunkel, Glenda Gaiman, Larry Phillips, Marie Lake, Michael Harley, Rex Kissinger, Lexi Garber, Pastor Dave, Elaine Kamoff, and the family of Harry Hoppus. to worship this fall Sunday, it's our first fall Sunday uh, in a while. Um, please read the announcements in the bulletin for some things coming up, like next week's um, rally day and our anniversary uh, celebrations. Uh, today is Harvest Home. We have up here some uh, food donations. Thank you all for donating food to go to the Schuylkill Valley Food Pantry. Uh, we also have these wonderful mums and, of course, gourds and pumpkins and such. Uh, after worship, we're going to be going across the street, and we're going to be blessing those two farm implement trucky things that 
because I'm not a farmer, I can't tell you the details, but someone will be there to tell you what they are. But we're going to bless them because they're part of the harvest. Um, if you'd like to pick up your mums before you go across the street, so you have to come back to get them, uh, we will take a few minutes to have that happen. Linda will come up here, and if you want to take them quick, and then walk across the street for the blessing of the uh, tractors and such. Otherwise, you come back in after and pick your mums up. Okay, now, Linda wants to speak, and Karen wants to speak. So let's see, we'll let Linda go first, and then Karen can be the, uh, she can do the tag team and do. <laughs> Good morning. Okay, this is a situation that we have. Our gift cards that we have for the different stores that we go to. Well, we presently have about $1,120 worth of gift cards from Weiss. I haven't had anybody buy Weiss cards in a long time, and I'd really like to um, see that number go down, because when I have to order cards for Weiss or Redner's, I need to buy $1,000 worth at a time. So I'm trying to push the Weiss cards right now. Uh, if, you don't, if you're really against going to Weiss to shop, uh, buy them for a gift or a Christmas, birthday, whatever. i just like to get that number down on it. And then, uh, and then the rest will go. You know, Redner's and the rest will continue doing that. So if you can do that, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, good morning, my turn. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, if you notice, I'm smiling a lot more than I was last Sunday because we lived through another turkey supper. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone that helped in any way, whether you peeled a sweet potato or squeezed lemons or crimp pies or whatever you did. We appreciate it. And, and those of you that came and, and bought the dinners and sold dinners, so uh, bottom line report was that we served um, 465 takeout dinners plus many pepper cabbage orders and, and uh, filling orders and pies, like over 200 pies, by the way. Um, and that whole supper was 525 pounds of turkey, by the way. So. Uh, a, a sincere thank you to everyone. And uh, we also have some food to buy after church, which will be available down at the hall. There's actually two extra whole dinners. There's filling and sweet potatoes, pepper cabbage. There's waffles and gravy that are free. And there's a few pies, just a few pies. So again, notice my smile. Okay. Thank you. For the good of the congregation, then let's begin.
We gather in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. God has created the warm sunshine and the freezing snow. God has created the honey flower and the fragrant tree. God has brought life to the seed. God has blessed us with the fruits of the harvest. God has formed you in his own holy image. We shall rejoice and be glad in his image. Let us praise the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. Let us pray. We praise you, almighty God, for the power you have shown through the creation of this world. Grant us the faith both in worship and in witness to praise your name forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, forgive us for abusing your creation. Forgive us for taking for granted all the gifts given us. Forgive us for not seeing the beauty of the world and the beauty of our lives. Forgive us for not reconciling our sins one to another. Have mercy on us and grant us peace with you and with each other. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. Hear the good news of the gospel. Our broken world still belongs to God. Through Jesus Christ, he restores the earth to himself and restores us to the hope of our salvation. We are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading this morning is from Deuteronomy chapter 26. When you have entered the land the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance and have taken possession of it and settled in it, take some of the first fruits of all that you produce from the soil of the land that the Lord your God has given you and put them in a basket. Then go to the place the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name and say to the priest in office at the time, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come to the land the Lord swore to our forefathers to give us. 
The priest shall take the basket from your hands and set it down in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, my father was a wandering Aramean, and he went down into Egypt with a few people and lived there and became a great nation, powerful and numerous. But the Egyptians treated us meanly and made us suffer, putting us to hard labor. Then we cried out to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our vo voice and saw our misery, toil, and oppression. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great terror and with miraculous signs and wonders. He brought us to this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now I bring the first fruits of the soil that you, O oh God, have given me. Place the basket before the Lord your God and bow down before him. And you and the Levites and the aliens among you shall rejoice in all good things the Lord your God has given to you and your household. We will read Psalm 148 responsively. Alleluia. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise, Praise him all the angels of his. Praise, Praise him all the souls. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise, Praise him, Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He made them stand fast forever and ever. He gave them all which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind doing his will. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and wind. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world, young men and maidens, all old and young together, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name only is exalted, his splendor is over earth and heaven. He has raised up strength for his people and praise for all his loyal servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near him. Hallelujah. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, he has scattered abroad his gifts to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proven yourselves, men will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him. 
For no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any one of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It's better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. be seated. Would that young man want to come forward for the children's sermon? Well, hello. Come on. You're the only one today. Come up here and sit. Here, sit uh, over here next to me. Hi, I I'm Pastor Dave. What's your name? David. You're, you're David too. We have dual Davids. All right. Right. So what I have here, first in this basket, are these. So I want you to take one of the white pumpkins. Go ahead, just take one. One you like the best. Okay. So now all these pumpkins look the same, right? Yeah. They're, they're white. They're about the same size. They have the, the green stem on top. They're, they're, you know, they're pretty much all the same kind of of pumpkin. Now this here, you take one of these. These are gourds. Okay. Now, does this gourd look like this gourd? No. How about, does this one look like this one? No. So these are all different looking, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. See, okay, so we're all human beings, right? We're all people. So we're all like the pumpkin in that we're all the same. We're all made of flesh and bones. 
We all breathe, we all eat, we all drink water, we all, um, you know, uh, walk around and, and have fun. We're all the same, but also we're different, like these gourds are different. Right? Yeah. You know, some people are old, some people are young, some people are women, some people are men. Some people um, um, go to school, some people go to work. Some like pizza, some like hamburgers. We're all different in many ways. Some like basketball, some like football. Some are artists and some can't draw. We're all different, but we're still human beings. Yeah. Yeah. So see, God loves us because we're human beings. But all, God also loves us because we're all different. We have different interests, different gifts we can give to other people. We, we love different things. And if, if, if everybody was the same, that'd be very boring, you know, because we are different in many ways, even though we're all human beings. That is a blessing to us all because we get to see our different talents and our different um, uh, joys. So let's always believe, remember that we are all human, but we're also different because God made us all different to do special things in the kingdom. Thank you for coming up, David. Okay. okay. See you around. Oh, sure. Yeah, those are yours now. Those are definitely, yeah. In fact, you want more. There's a lot more. You could take them all. Okay. All right. So I, uh, I generally don't like horror movies. I've, I've, I've seen some. I, I, I've seen some pretty gory movies. Tisha saw one with, 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 with me on, on, on a retreat. Uh, but I generally don't like horror movies. I, I mean, back when I was growing up, everyone was, gonna, was seeing the Freddy Krueger movies, the Nightmare on Elm Street. You know, all those movies, you know, it was like, cool, let's go to the cinema and see Freddy Krueger. No, I, I, I never got into horror movies. And, of course, there's been a lot of horror movie franchises since back then, right? A lot of them. But um, horror movies are just not, and gore just are not entertaining for me in general, especially not the, the, the kind of movie where it's, uh, gore and violence and blood and guts just for the sake of gore and violence and blood, blood and guts, no other reason. Um, it's always been odd to me in the gospel today. In the gospel today, Jesus is saying things that sound like they're part of a script of the next movie in the Saw franchise. Cut off your hand. Cut off your foot. Poke out your eye. Declares the Prince of Peace. Bloody and gory and definitely a, a strong R rating. It sounds like some sort of self-mutilation slasher movie. The saving grace here, the saving grace here is that we read in the gospel that Jesus taught in parables. So we're not to take any of that literally. It's a parable. It's not literal. But why would Jesus use that kind of imagery, even if it was a, a, in the form of a parable and, and not supposed to be taken literally, why would he use that, use that imagery? Are there not less violent examples to lift up if you want to make the point that someone should not sin? Maybe it's kind of like that old standard. If you see your two-year-old about to put a fork in the electric outlet, this is not a time to calmly try to reason with your kid. Now, Bobby, I believe that if you go through with your plan, 
there is likely to be a not too happy consequence. I believe you should weigh your options carefully before proceeding. No, you run over to the child, yank the fork out, yank the fork out of his hand, yell and scream, don't ever try this again. And a few choice words might season your speech. And if Bobby cries, so what? <laughs> You've taught him an essential life lesson. In both Bobby and the Fork and Jesus' teaching, the factor that, that provokes the use of language and actions that we would ordinarily not be used is urgency. Urgency. Bobby could have killed himself. Jesus tells his disciples and us, we are playing with our eternal life. If drastic measures need to be considered to get into heaven, then we need to go there. And in the context of the gospel, it's not just about you, it's also about the, the little ones, right? He's talking about the little ones, putting a stumbling block in front of, of the little ones and not messing up their lives by what you're doing. Little ones could mean children, but it also could mean the spiritual little ones. It means people who are new in the faith, are shaky and unsure about how they should act, how they should believe, what they should think. The, the neophytes in the, in the faith. We have friends that we hang out with and we become part of a group. If we play sports, we might become part of a jock group. Artists often hang together. Musicians may have a bunch of friends and play in a band or other bands with each other. Maybe it's a group that meets every once in a while playing cards. Birds of a feather do tend to flock together. And some people gather together and seem to only party 24-7. Others like to be bullies and, and try to be tough guys. Some groups are dedicated to vandalism or crime. I remember the fine movie Gran Torino, which I showed to the Lyft group. In it, uh, a Korean kid, a uh, teenager, Tao, is being pursued by a local gang that includes his cousin. But they are basically giving him no choice. He needs to join the gang. It's not about persuasion. It's about demanding that he's going to join the gang. Because every, every kid has to join the gang. Either you join the gang or they beat you up. So he has to join the gang. His initiation into the gang is the stealing of a car, the, the, the Gran Torino of the title. He is unsuccessful in his attempt. And there's a whole lot of movie after the attempted crime. But talk about a stumbling block. Talk about glorifying sinful behavior in order just to fit in. To be part of the gang. Nothing is meant to get in the way of the whole life discipleship. Some of us have taken the slogan, everything in moderation, and seem to think we have sin in moderation. Not in the eyes of Jesus. You can't cherish, we can't cherish our favorite sin. It has to come to the cross. Our sin has to die. There are no exceptions. It isn't acceptable to say, um, well, I've always 
uh, had a temper, or I've always had an eye on the ladies, or it's just the way I'm made. Help is always available from Christ and from his people as we hold ourselves accountable to one another and support each other. The bottom line is, the bottom line is, it has to go if it's sin. It has to go. And I would venture... <laughs> it just bugs me when that happens. I would venture that if we, take, if we take not just this passage, but the wider Old Testament witness... It isn't just a question of outright sin. The writer of the Hebrews speaks about both of every weight and the sin that clings so closely. Sometimes we take good things and make them into a weight. Instead of receiving things with gratitude to God, we take them with greed. We turn all aspects of God's good creation into an idol and worship it. it. Becomes a weight around our around us. Something good is perverted. Perhaps the biggest danger is to is to those of us who have been Christians for many years and we have become complacent. We just tick over at a low level of discipleship and we don't like to confront the radical demands of Jesus. It may have been different when we first found faith, but the enthusiasm wanes and our lives become consumed with responsibilities and challenges that we don't want even more coming our way from the direction of Jesus. We rather our faith become a comfort than a challenge. But the reality is that in both these areas, causing others to stumble and causing ourselves to stumble, Jesus gives us some grave warnings. If we ignore his call, if we cause others to stumble, inhibiting their opportunities to live out their kingdom calling, then he says, it would be better to have had a millstone hung around our neck before being thrown into the sea. This was particularly a cruel punishment the Romans inflicted upon when they crushed a zealot insurrection. What a shocking way to warn his hearers of the dire consequences if we stand in the way of another disciple's ministry. And then we have that outrageous amputation language we just thought about as a warning not to make ourselves stumble. When we speak about being thrown into hell, hell is Gehenna in the Greek, the Greek name for the Kinnom Valley where Jerusalem residents deposited their sewage in sewer channels, and where rubbish and the carcasses of unclean animals constantly burned. It was a big burning pit of waste and garbage and dead things. Hence the whole idea of the concept of hell being a place of fire. It wasn't a tourist destination. You did not, not go and visit Gehenna on your tour of the Holy Land, even if it wasn't Jesus' day. And while I'm sure his language here is a bit, every bit the real world as metaphor as the amputation language, one thing is clear to me. He is telling us there is a choice of two destinies in eternity, one full of joy in his Father's presence the other empty of it. Having chosen to be absent from the Father's love. Those of us who have known grace 
should not have a problem in picking the joyful destination. The joyful destination of heaven. Amen. Please rise. In response to hearing God's word for us, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died in the He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Amen. Please be seated for our offering. Thank you. 
Let us pray. May children heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. We pray for the church and its ministry. Bless the newly baptized and encourage them in their journey of faith. Sustain all members of the body of Christ in lives of prayer, service, and worship. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for natural wonders of your creation. Restore damaged forests, waterways, and natural habitats, and lead us to be good stewards of what you have provided. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those in authority. Give them wise minds and compassionate hearts. Strengthen in them a desire to protect the vulnerable and care for those undeserved. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are struggling with cancer, dementia, or other illnesses. Provide them with peace and resilience in the days ahead. Sustain caregivers with energy and patience. With those we mentioned in the announcements and written in the bulletin today, and those we mention in our hearts now who need your special presence. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, Amen. who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. May you go on your way. As you go on your way, know that God goes with you. May God go before you to show you the way. May God go behind you to encourage you. May God go beside you to befriend you. May God be above you to watch over you. And may God be with you to give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.